This is Burnham on Sea, a town where I grew up ever since the age of four years old. It's been my home and despite being familiar with many countries around the world and working in different parts of Britain, this has always remained home and I've always come back here. And I want to tell you a little bit about the town as far as its history, geography and tourism is concerned. When we were 10 years old, we were at the school just in front of that pavilion there with the white roof. There was a school there called St Andrews and Mr Speakman told us 10 year olds he was going to do a course of lessons with us called Local Studies and we were learning the history of this town which fascinated me and it paid off because when we were 15 years old at the secondary school Mr Strickland said to us he was going to enter a team on ITV Harlech TV against a school in Western Supermare having a, co a quiz competition about the local area. So that gave us a chance to learn even more and I was one of the three chosen to represent the school. One was Paul Burt, Ian Dumbervan and myself and we did win the competition. The history of burnham on -Sea, Mr Speakman told us that the town was called Burnham because it was a bend in the river and Ham is Hamlet, an Anglo-Saxon name. After that we learnt about the Doomsday Book and King William the Conqueror had an entry about burnham on -Sea. and I can't quite remember it now but something like 50 sheep, a mare, so many houses and what the town was worth. Next in history, we had the formation of the lighthouse. There was a lady who lived on the seafront here and her husband was a fisherman and he was late coming home one night, so she put a candle in the window. It must have been a big candle because ships were paying her to keep that candle in the window every night. Then the Reverend David Davis from St Andrew's Church, which is the tower behind the pavilion there. The church was completed about 1415. It was very famous in the respect that one of its most famous people to get married there was a certain Paddy Ashdown MP, now Lord Ashdown. He married his fiancée who lived in burnham on sea And we go back to Reverend David Davis, he bought the rights of the candle as a lighthouse and he put a big lantern on top of the church tower. Then Trinity House, they built a three-story tower behind the pavilion and in front of the church down there and we had a lighthouse in the early 1800s. A lighthouse was then put on the beach with nine legs which has become a symbol of this town. It's in council logos, it was always featured in sunset photographs and the sunsets here in burnham on sea facing west meant that the famous artist Turner came here to paint sunsets. Then there was a big lighthouse built slightly inland, which you can see down there, a tall white tower. So we've got two lighthouses in the, in the town. The one on the beach doesn't work. We've got two or three Georgian houses. One was used by the Reverend David Davis as a spa house in the Victorian times when the <coughs> advent of the railways and beachside, seaside tourism built up in this country. The beach is seven miles long. It goes from here to Breen Down. And Breen Down is a mile long. It's a 333 feet high mount that goes out to sea. And when I was young, I ran from here to the end of Breen Down and back in two hours, 13 minutes. I think it was in 1977. It was two hours, 11 minutes the first time I did it. Another physical feat that Burnham on Sea lent itself to when I was in my 20s was that I was swam out to Steer Island from here to the island and back. It was June 1977. It was a very rough day. It was so rough and the sea was so cold. The roughness of the sea meant I couldn't do front crawl on the way out. I had to swim out doing side stroke and breast stroke, which took me about 40 minutes. I cramp and I remember walking up the beach and shivering. And then I swam back in a mere 20 minutes with the northwesterly wind. 
Another physical feat which was an adventure was Michael Truman and I, we got into a twin-seater canvas canoe with pinholes and we canoed from here down to Bridgewater and back. I don't know anyone who's ever done that. And that idea was born because when I was in year 10 or 11 at King Alfred School, Miss Lamb, the English teacher, said, write an essay about an imaginary journey. So I thought I'll canoe to Bridgewater and back. And a few years after leaving school, Michael and I, we did that venture. Talking about canoeing and the tides, we've got the second highest rise and fall of water in the world here. It's 40 feet high. It comes right in and smashes against the wall and can go right out on the spring tides. The whole beach is empty. And burnham on sea is at an estuary of the River Parrot, which was on the news in recent winters because of the flooding down on the Somerset Moors. But just at the end of the seafront down there, you've got the exit, the estuary of the River Brew, and that flows through Street and Glastonbury. Up along the beach by the lighthouse there, there's many miles of sand dunes, so it's a fantastic ecosystem. And what is also fantastic to me, as a geographer, is that right here where we're standing on the jetty. We are exactly three degrees west of London in longitude. That means we're 12 minutes behind. And before the railways came along, every town would have a different time because they would set it on a sundial. And you can prove that Burnham on Sea is 12 minutes behind London because if you look at the newspapers and see lighting up time, sunset, sunrise, you'll see that the times vary across the country. That's why we're, we can prove we're three minutes behind, sorry, 12 minutes behind London. Now the last element of this video is about tourism. People from the Midlands love it down here because when you come down from Birmingham, the Midlands, Clevedon, Western Supermare, Burnham-on-Sea, they're the three settlements which travellers from the north will encounter. Most of the holidays here are in holiday camps or caravan sites which have been converted from farms to caravan holidays. Burnham-on-Sea has great links with the rest of the country. We're less than two miles from the railway station, Highbridge and Burnham, and a little detour here is years ago we used to be able to see railway tracks embedded in the jetty here because just past that windsock was a railway station and the trains came down here and passengers would disgorge from the train and get in paddle steamers and go from here over to Cardiff. You'll see at the end of the jetty on the left there a big cream building. That was put there by George Reed. It was a hotel that he built. He was an entrepreneur in the Victorian times. He built this jetty, he built this the school over there, and he built the manor gardens and put a house there. So we've got a lot of history, and that is now a pub which was once his hotel. Burnham-on-Sea attracts many people, not just for holidays, but they retire here. We've got a lot of care homes here, because it's a typical seaside town, because the environment, it's peaceful, low crime rate. It's a very healthy area in which to live, because the air is very, very clean. Because if you look out seaward here, the winds come southwest over the Quantock Hills or west direct from Canada. What some people don't like is the presence of the nuclear power plant over there called Hinkley Point. Very famous in the news. The Chinese are helping to build an extra reactor. It's nuclear power. It's sustainable because it's also recyclable as a source of power. So Burnham-on-Sea has got a lot to attract everybody. People like me who make it their home. I go around the world, but I still like coming back to home sweet home. Everybody or a lot of people seem to know each other. You can go into Tesco and have a job getting out of there because you end up having lots of conversations with people. Children love it here. They build their sand pies on the beach. And we also have a water ski championship, kite flying championship. And also, right at the end of the beach at Brian, they have land yachting races. So there's a lot of activity takes place here. It's very quiet, 
not too much traffic not a lot of jobs I don't think not a very booming economy for diversity there is seasonal work at the holiday camps and there's light industrial estates nearby we've got a lovely sea wall here which the steps take away a lot of the energy from the waves any remaining energy in the waves the waves go up the slope and roll back and fall back on themselves the wall was put there in about 1983 when we had terrific storms that smashed parts of the Victorian Wall. So, Burnham-on-Sea, this video has dealt with the history, the geography and elements of tourism. But one thing I must say just before I finish is when you come here, do take great care of how you use the beach because in the previous video there was an announcement about people not walking towards the water's edge because when the water is so far out like it is now, there's a lot of mud. And a girl called Liana got stuck in the mud when the tide was coming in and she was drowned. Perhaps about 10 years ago, it's 2017 now, it's September, and we had a couple of hovercrafts installed in burnham on sea as a rescue facility, which was a result of her drowning. One was called the Spirit of Liana. And on the jetty on the left-hand side here, you'll see we've got no pedestrian access this is a result because one little boy called Dylan four years ago fell off the edge and he was never seen again until his body was recovered a few days later and one other factor about the coastline here especially because people who come from the Midlands the interior aren't familiar with the coastline and its dangers they'll drive their vehicles on the beach and they get stuck in the mud and quite often in the national press you'll see pictures of expensive vehicles, 4x4s, three quarters submerged in water between here and Brian. So I would advise you to drive very carefully on this beach, keep to the sea wall or near the sand dunes, don't go anywhere near this muddy area here when you're in your vehicles because a lot of vehicles have been ruined. So apart from that, burnham on is a safe, peaceful, tranquil, fairly interesting place to visit and to live. Thank you for your attention and I hope you've enjoyed the video.